going to speak this morning about Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll put the sign up, giving thanks, so it's not just one day, but it's 365 days. Amen. It's an attitude of gratitude. Yes. You know, life has its bitter moments, its painful moments, its glorious moments. It's has every different kind of moment. But your attitude has a lot to say with what you do comes down the pike at you. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks. It doesn't say give every give thanks for everything. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens on this earth that you're not going to thank God for it. But in everything give thanks means in the middle of it, He is Lord in the middle of it. He has wisdom in the middle of it. God is there. He's a man He will in the midst of it. Some people, they come upon a situation that's really bad and they say, where is God here? Are you there? Maybe God's in you right at that moment. Amen. <laughs> So I thank God for the police and people that serve in different ways because they're God's hand to deal with things a lot of us can't deal with or don't know how to deal with, right? The guy driving the ambulance, the lady that you know tries to get your heart ticking again with that machine. Everything, give thanks. Thanks for the bitter and thanks for the sweet. Because all things can work together for good to those who love God and that are the called according to His purpose. This old Canadian guy I used to travel with, he's the older than me and that's hard to believe. He said when he was a young man, he was going to get on the train, a porter come off the train, he goes, young man, in this life, I'm going to have to learn to deal with the bitter and with the sweet. <laughs> He said, I'll never forget that. The guy talking to me was 68 years old. He said, I'll never forget what that porter told me. He says, I remember that my whole life. He used to sing this passage in the King James. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Well, verse 2 to 3 in this passage. So go ahead, let everyone know it. That God is good. That God is good. Let everyone know. Tell the world how He broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness yeah. and has gathered us together from all over the world. Amen. He has set us free to be His very own. Wow. Thankful. Thankful. Yes. What are you thankful for this morning? Hallelujah. At the end of this message, we're going to give you an opportunity to share something you're thankful for. And I'm sure you've been thinking about it for a few days, so maybe something new is going to pop into your mind too, or something different. Right? Hello? Anybody home? I start thinking about it. I'm thankful for my wife. Listen, if you've got a wife, be thankful you got one. Amen. Because unthankful husbands end up getting in trouble with somebody else's wife. Because the grass is always greener on the other side. Just be thankful for the wife you got. Ladies, be thankful for the husband you have. You, know, might have to, you may have to double up on the prayer for your attitude of gratitude. And for the things you need them to change. Come on. Catch wow. that sentence? Well, yes. You're going to pray about the things they need to change. To suit me. That's right. Maybe it's better. I should pray for myself that I can endure them. Maybe that's not good either. Be thankful for what you've got. Amen. Now I'm thinking about this one proverb, Proverbs 27, 7. 
It says the full soul, this is King James, loves. That's pretty, that's pretty hard. The full soul loves a honeycomb. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not hungry. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Even the bitter things are sweet to a hungry person. You know, we used to live in uh, deep inside of China. I mean, I like coffee. I like good coffee. But I'll tell you what, when we spotted a jar of Maxwell House instant in the market, it's going, man, get it before somebody else does. Yeah. I never drink instant if I can get away with it. But I'll tell you, it tasted really good. Yeah. <laughs> when you're hungry for something, you know, we used to live with these folks for about three months. We were between houses in the Philippines. And so my wife and I had four children. These folks invited us in, and they had four, three kids. And uh, we would eat dinner with them every day for about three months until things worked out for us. And so we'd sit down, and we'd thank God for the food. And then the kid, their kids would complain through the whole meal. I mean, their mom wasn't the greatest cook. But let me tell you what, there's food on the table. Finally, I mean, it's not my business, right? Because I'm the guest. And finally I said, now wait a minute. A little bit ago, we thanked God for this food, and now we're complaining. Does that mean we're uh, uh, complaining to God for what we just thanked Him for? You know, there was a guy in our church a few years back, and he said, I just realized, because I grew up in the church, and I'm a preacher's son, and I just realized that it's okay with God if I eat without praying a prayer of grace. God's not going to send me to hell for not thanking Him for the food. And yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> that's true, but the whole point is, being grateful to have something. That's right. That's right. There's people around the world that don't have much. I mean, some of the folks in the Philippines, I mean, they eat more rice than anybody else in Asia. They can't even afford rice. Talk ramen is cheaper than the rice. So they end up eating that dry or throwing it in some water and hoping it'll swell. You know, here I am. What is this stuff? You know what I mean? So when you sit down and you thank God for the, the food, remember to keep thanking Him for it. And if it don't taste good and you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. That's what my mom always used to say. I had no menu choices. So on the table, they don't like it, don't eat it. So I got fat. Just ate it. Whatever's there, mom. She was a depression lady, so by the way, you clean your plate up, mister. <laughs> Don't you know there's people in China starving? <laughs> you ever heard that when you were a kid? I like the way it puts it here as we go down a little bit farther in this uh, Psalm 107. <laughs> Some of us wandered in the wilderness like desert no match with no true direction of dwelling place. Starving, thirsting, staggering, we became desperate and filled with despair. Then we cried out, Lord help us! Rescue us! And He did! He led us right into a place of safety and abundance, a suitable city to dwell in. So lift your hands and thank God for His marvelous kindness and for His miracles of mercy for those He loves. How He satisfies the souls of thirsty ones and fills the hungry with all that is good. Wow, man. I like this translation because it says, lift your hands and thank God. Come on, everybody. Lift Woo! your hands. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord. Um, a place of destitution, and that happens. That can happen in your heart, in your mind, your body, relationships, or whatever. 
have brought us into a better place, primarily the better place is satisfying our thirsty souls. Amen? Thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled, Jesus said. You know, I didn't know I was looking for it, but God put it in front of me and then, then I found it. There it is. You ever, you ever been like that? I didn't know what I was looking for. I just know I didn't have what I needed or what I thought I needed. But the Lord met me. Some of us once sat in darkness, living in the dark shadows of death. We were prisoners to our pain, chained to our regrets. Anybody ever regretted anything from the past? Oh, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have been there, shouldn't have went there. Chained to regrets. Well, thank God we can get beyond that, huh? Come on. Thank God He forgives us and gives us a better path. For we rebelled against God's Word and rejected the wise counsel of God Most High. Now, none of us got that, I'm sure. I mean, I've had experiences in my life, and maybe some of you have too, where I knew what I should do, but I decided, uh-uh, I'm going to do the opposite. Well, that got me in a lot of trouble. But some of us are stubborn. The Bible says stubbornness is like the sin of witchcraft. Why is that? Well, it's because I'm trying to manipulate things with my attitude. If you say red, I'm going to say blue. If you say right, I'm going to say left. Wait, that's a political statement. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you see, there's just this attitude. Sometimes we get, then you got to stop and go, wait, why do I hear whether we go left or right or whatever? I'm not the one in the steering wheel. None of you guys ever been in a van? Everybody shouting at the driver? No. Sometimes. So he humbled us through our circumstances, watching us as we stumbled, and no one there to pick us back up. Our own pain became our punishment. That's a pretty heavy line. Our own pain became our punishment. Then we cried out, Lord, help us. Rescue us. And He did. His light broke through the darkness and He led us out in freedom from death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for His marvelous kindness and His miracles of mercies for those He loves. Hey! Thank you, Lord! Jesus! I don't know about you, but he gave me hope. Yes. I did not have hope. That's right, hopeless. I had little mini surges of having a goal and trying to reach it and be the best. And then that didn't mean nothing. I was substituting a goal for hope. Hope has to do with, first of all, the hope of eternity. Right? And the hope that things are going to go to the, be better. Maybe I'm going to be a part of somebody else's hope. Amen. There's an old song we used to sing. Jesus, my reason for living. Jesus, my King of all kings. Jesus, my blessed Redeemer. Jesus, my everything. Jesus now, more than ever, sailing through stormy weather, all my sins have been forgiven. Amen. Come on. That's the best part of it. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful today I'm still breathing. Amen. Sometimes it takes a little medicine to keep the breath going, but I'm still breathing. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful God <laughs> reined me in and set me on a different path. Amen. He showed me this straight and narrow way when I was blazing down the highway to hell. Whoa. Yes. Come on. 
There's a busy road out there on the highway to hell. It's as broad as the way that leads to destruction, and many are going down. And they're all going, come on, man, come with me. Don't you see? Everybody's doing it. Go with the maddening crowd. You know what? There's a whole crowd of people serving Jesus. That's right. A lot of people are getting saved in this country right now because the enemy took away their sports, took away all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Favorite drink at home. Took away a lot of stuff. Now they got to get a life. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Life is bitter. Just thank Jesus. You're not alone anymore to deal with a bitter circumstance. Right. Jesus. To deal with your pain. We had a, a guy that was uh, with me in church back in the 70s. Sorry. And... Uh, he was like, oh man, he was 16. And that dude looked like a... You ever seen any jackets got a bunch of zippers on them? That dude had scars. It looked like he had zippers on him, you know? He had so many surgeries. He's real healthy. But that's what life he'd gone through, you know? He ended up having that open heart surgery. Then 10 years later, he had open heart surgery again. He was working at Walmart when he was 76 in the nursery. Packing bags of stuff around. Loving people there. Anyway, I was like, wow, man, that guy's been chopped up a lot. I started counting mine. I got about seven or so. A zipper man. Thank God for surgery. Thanks God I healed up. I probably forgot a couple of them. <laughs> He rescued us, kept us going. Sometimes I don't even understand myself. You? Amen. You ever got to that spot? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for me. I, I don't really get me sometimes, Lord, but I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> God knows. Thank God for that. God has given me a reason to live. God has... Re giving me a reason to fight for life. Woo. Amen. Ever find somebody who give up on life? It's not going to be long. Or they stop breathing. People fight for life. Come on. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, God. Lift up your hands and give Him thanks for His marvelous works and His wonderful kindness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Verse 15. Verse 16, for he smashes through heavy prison doors, Woo! shattered the steel bars that held us back just to set us free. Some of us were such fools, bringing ourselves sorrow and suffering all because of our sins. Sick and feeble, unable to stand the sight of food, we drew near the gates of death, then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. That's right. Didn't kick you to the side of the road. Yeah, it serves you right, man. He didn't do it. God spoke the words, be healed. And we were healed, delivered from death's door. So lift up your hands and give thanks to God for His miracles of mercy. For those you love. Thank you, Lord. Verse 22, bring your praise and its offering and your thanks as a sacrifice as you sing your story of miracles with a joyful song. Miracles. So praise and worship and thanksgiving yes. is a sacrifice to God. Woo! When things are going great, it comes so easy, it just flows. Things are painful when you're hurting in your mind, in your body, something's gone sideways. I mean, and you lift up the praise, that's a sacrifice. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. That's how David begins one of the Psalms. 
We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Amen. Bring your offering. Give thanks as a sacrifice. Amen. You know, some of us have memorized Philippians chapter 4. Yeah, we have it. I come back to this a lot. Not to preach, just to preach to myself. Philippians 4, 6. <laughs> Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Come on, don't tell me you don't worry. Oh, yeah. My grandma was a worry ward. <laughs> If things got solved, she'd find something else to worry about. <laughs> you ever been a leader in any capacity at a business or a church or anything? Yeah. You got worries every day. You got to take your burdens and lay them at the feet of the cross, right? Now, here's how you can do that. You say, what are you, crazy? Who doesn't worry? Well, we all do. The question is, what do we do with it? You know? Try to fix it ourselves. Yeah, that works sometimes, but that don't work all the time. Be saturated in prayer. Here's how you Woo! deal with it. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Attitude of gratitude, right? Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. That's right. Yes. Now let's be honest. Doubt is part of faith. I know we're not supposed to doubt, but everybody doubts, either secretly or publicly, by telling you about it. But we all have our doubts, but that, as long as you're not stopping at the doubt, it brings you to that place. And sometimes you just pray, and you hardly have an ounce of faith, and God does it anyway because He's a big God. <clears throat> Saturated prayer every day. Hope with overflowing gratitude. Telling every detail of your life that God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Now a lot of times you stop right there, but here's the next part. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is Authentic, real, honorable, admirable, beautiful, respectful, pure, holy, merciful, and kind. Fasten, fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always. A lot of times the reason our attitude sucks is because we're not keeping our brain in verse 8. We, op we worry, we offer it to God, we thank Him, we speak in tongues, we, we, we speak in English or whatever, and, and then we just go ahead and for a moment we find peace, but then we go back to worrying about it, and then we let our brain go sideways off of this kind of stuff. Well, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? Oh man, I can give you three different things. And that's probably what's going to happen. And then you get off of it. <laughs> then the peace is gone again. Wait a minute, I thought I, I laid that at the feet of Jesus. I put this, put this thing in God's hands. God's way bigger than me. He's smarter than me. He's more powerful than me than, than everything. And then I'm taking it back right now because it's, I have responsibility here. Whoa. Huh? <laughs> Equally yoked I means you've got a piece of the action. You don't just sit back and go, oh, I've got to fix everything. <laughs> He'll tell you to sit still for a minute and tell you to get up and go do something. But you put it in His hands, leave it there. Amen? Amen? Come to the end of the year, some of us have the best year ever with our families, and some of us it's the worst year ever with our families. Listen, God could sort it out if we cooperate with Him. But people don't like the word submit. I don't want to submit to anybody or anything. How about cooperation? How about cooperating with God? That's the number one thing. That's right. You know, 
This Bible doesn't tell us everything, but it tells us just enough to help us to figure out how to cooperate with Amen. God. Believe that. Amen. Yes. Keep your brain this <coughs> continually fixed. There's all kinds of fasteners or things that'll fix something good and strong and solid. Where am I going to find those? He'll fix it. That'll just mean get it straightened out. I mean attach it strong. Keep your thoughts attached. I don't care what kind of screw it is. Get it in there tight. Need to put a few lock washers on there? Go ahead. <laughs> Fix your brain right. on what is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure right. and holy, merciful and kind. You know what I've discovered is I can get sucked into people's dramas sometimes. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're a pastor, because some people think you're supposed to solve all things. <laughs> right. And so you're a sounding board... Sometimes it's more like they regurgitated stuff on you. Sometimes they want an answer. Sometimes they don't want an answer. Sometimes they just want you to listen. You know what I mean? And if you try to fix things for everybody, you're going to go crazy. That's right. right. You can help them. You can facilitate them. You go, well, you see, you take that star, that box of stuff, star screws that are one and a quarter, and you, here's the wrench. Now you attach it for yourself. I'm not going to do it for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Authentic, real, honorable, admirable, beautiful, respectful, pure, holy, merciful, and kind. Right. Man, we wouldn't be having people burning stuff down and turning cars over and doing strange and wonderful things up to each other, beating each other up with skateboards and stuff. We wouldn't have that going on if our brain was stuck in that spot. Amen? Fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God Praising Him always. Praising Him always. Praise Him. An attitude of gratitude. 